So here I am in Behance in my web browser, and uh, I actually have another browser window open over here, and it says that um, I have to click to verify my email. Please make sure before you start uploading artwork that you have verified your email. I have in this case, um, so nothing to worry about there. Um, so I'm ready to go ahead and begin to add work to my portfolio. So I'm going to click on Add Work, and I'm going to add a project. Now, in this case, I'm actually going to go ahead and uh, upload some files from uh, from a student um, to use as an example. So it starts um, when you do your first job here it's gonna ask you to upload files here. I'm actually gonna click on that X and uh, I'm gonna click next through all of the things that pop up um, and you can follow those if you would like but I'm gonna go ahead and just use this normal interface right here. I'm gonna click on upload files and I'm gonna choose a few files um, from this Behance student example folder that I created. I've got three JPEGs that I'm going to upload. So, or two JPEGs and one PNG as the case may be. And it's gonna go ahead and upload those. And, um, and then I have to decide if this is the order that I want this to be in. Um, so it is, uh, it is not quite in the order that I want it to be in. So as I float over it, I can go to um, this little blue pencil that pops up and click on reorder and it allows me to kind of click and drag. So I've got the finished Illustrator logo right here, the hand-drawn logo, and a page of sketches right here. I think this order looks good for this project. So I'm going to click on save order. So you'll notice that I've uploaded more than just the final project. In this case I've done that hand-drawn logo and I've done a page of sketches. So you're creating a lot of um, artifacts when you create these projects and it's great to save as much as much as possible onto this Behance portfolio so we can see the process that you've gone through uh, to create your project. <clears throat> excuse me, not just the, um, the final project itself. Now there are other types of artifacts that you might want to upload and that includes like text. So if you have a reflection to upload or if you have a work cited to upload, you're able to paste it in here. I actually happen to have some gibberish text ready to go so I'm gonna paste that in there and I'm gonna make sure that it makes sense. Now of course it doesn't make sense here because it's gibberish text but make sure that you've got paragraph breaks and everything else. You do have some font controls and you've got some control over bold and italic and some different colors and things um, so you can uh, work with that there. Now there are other options. Um, if you have embed media, if you've done animation, you're going to want to um, embed this from YouTube or Vimeo or any place else that allows embedded video to show up. Um, you can do dividers and spacers, so if you decide you want a divider between each artifact, you can do that. You can control the amount of spacing, the amount of header space, the color of the background, everything else. But once you have all of your artifact artifacts all uploaded, you can go ahead and name your project and click on continue. Then you go on to the cover page. You can see this goes to number two, cover, and it's just asking for almost like a profile picture for your project. So in many cases, you'll actually just kind of upload that final project again. Now, while I'm doing this, um, this cover photo is a little bit picky. Um, first of all, it's hard to get the whole thing in there. I don't, I'm not going to worry about this. It's just going to it's going to give me a little preview there. But if my file is too small, this doesn't work. If my file is too big, this doesn't work. So you'll need to go into Photoshop and resize your picture if you're having trouble getting the cover page to work properly. So I'm going to click on Crop and Continue. <clears throat> And then I get to the third and final setting here, and that's the settings page, and there's a lot of confusing things um, going on uh, here. So everything on the left is required for me to do. Everything on the right is not required. So um, creative fields is kind of great because it shows me real jobs that creative people are working in. So as far as career exploration goes, you see some of that in here. So this is graphic design, so I'm going to tag that. Then it asks me to come up with some um, custom tag. So I'm going to call it a logo, uh, hand-drawn logo is in there, um, vector logo, um, I can also even tag our class, DID1, whatever it else, whatever else I want I can tag it on there. Then the description, this is just an area where I can do a very brief description. I don't want anything as long as a reflection here. Um, I'm just going to say this is a logo design for, actually let's call this personal logo design for digital image design one. Um, 
right here, you should see the Behance logo. If it says that your project is not visible, that is because you have not verified your email address. So make sure you go back, verify your email address, then you'll have to go back into your project and set this to visible again, because it's gonna upload this and it's gonna be a private project and I won't be able to see it. Um, then there's 4A Team. So you can click on Add Team if you would like. This is optional but we have a team for uh, digital image design. So if I go to Mason HS, I will see DID1 and DID2 show up. If you're in the design internship, we also have a team that shows up there. So I'm gonna go ahead and tag our team here and uh, it'll say pending because I will have to personally log in and accept you to the team page. And I click on done. So that's everything on the left side. <clears throat> on the right side, um, the brand, agency, school, we leave all that alone. Um, credits, if you've worked on this project with more than one person, you can tag a co-owner. Next is copyright. In most cases, you're going to want to click on here and go to no posting or usage without permission. Um, this keeps people from using your project without actually asking for you first. If you'd like to have those out on a Creative Commons license, which we have learned about in this course, you can do that as well. I'm gonna put this at no posting, especially since I'm actually using a student work here as an example. I'm gonna click on done. If I'd like to do tools and hardware, I can do Adobe, Adobe Illustrator. Let's spell that correctly, Adobe Illustrator CC. If I, um, if I wanted to say that I did this on an iMac, um, I did this on an Apple iMac, I can add that on there. Whatever else I might want to tag here. Click on done, and then I will click on the green publish button. Okay. Now, if you've linked Facebook, uh, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, or any of your other social media sites, um, you would actually be able to then promote this by putting it out onto your social media. That's something that you'll have to tie together at home. Um, personally, on my own portfolio page, I usually have um, a tweet go out whenever I publish a project. I just think that's kind of fun. It does that automatically. Okay. If you don't have anything tied in, go ahead and hit the X, and there you go. There is your project listing all the artifacts that you created in this, uh, in this unit. People can appreciate it by clicking on the thumbs up. It's like a like in Facebook. Um, you can comment back and forth with people. Um, your tools used, you can see, show up here. Um, you can see the other tags that you've come up with. Um, so that is how our Behance project looks. Now, when I click on my portfolio, I can see that uh, I can add multiple projects as I go. Um, I can click on my team page, and once that I'm accepted to the team page, you'll be able to see um, all of the DID work that's done as well. Now, just a note, as I click up here, you will see that um, behance.net slash MHS Digital. This is the link to my portfolio site. You will need to turn this link into me so we're able to find your artwork. Um, it's a very simple link, so you're able to share that out to your friends and family so they can see what kind of work you're creating here in digital image design. Now, while you're in this part, if you'd like to change other things of your profile, um, you can float over it, click on that little edit button, and you're able to change um, occupation, company, websites. You can add a profile picture, everything you would like to do to make this portfolio look really nice, polished, and professional.